dejamos. Hello, Claudi. Claudi Gami. Hello, HP. Hola. Hello, Arja. Welcome. <laughs> How are you? Hi, Paper Gummy. Hola a todos. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Hola, Claudia. Saludos hasta Argentina. Sí, Branda. Welcome, Origami Angel. Ay, Mr. E is there. Hello, Mr. E. Look at these people who are entering today. Those are the people who like the challenges, who like heart origami. So welcome everybody. I'm fine, thank you. I'm very excited. <laughs> Look at that. Hola, Olga. Hola, Chili. Hola, Marla. Hola, Lupita. Saben, la mayoría de personas que veo son personas que les gusta el origami difícil, así que, hola Masao San, ¿cómo estamos? Paper Tulip, María Luz, hola Yulain, ¿cómo estamos? Veo que han entrado los valientes. Hello Pharrell, welcome. <ríe> veo a las personas valientes que les gustan los retos para el día de hoy, porque hoy tenemos un reto enorme. Hello, hello. Hola, Sandrita, ¿cómo estamos? Hello. All the people I see here are the people who like challenges. I see people who like complex origami, so everybody welcome. Because today we're going to have a very special guest. You love their work, I do too. The only difference is that I cannot fold <laughs> as advanced as he does. So, yeah, <laughs> all together over here. Um, welcome everybody. Today, we're going to have Mr. E from New Zealand. Um, for us, it's still Friday. Um, here in America, it's afternoon. In Europe, it's night time. And for Mr. E, it's Saturday already in the morning. It's 7 a.m., imagine. So he's up very early. Um, bienvenidos a todos los que se unen. Eh, les estaba diciendo que para nosotros todavía es día viernes, ya viernes por la tarde. Personas que están en Europa, viernes por la noche. Pero para Mr. E es sábado ya, porque él está en, uh, en India. India es midnight, ya. Yeah. Hola, Nico. Hola, Larisa. Lara, Lara, mi querida Lara en Rusia. Entonces, para Mr. E es sábado. En Nueva Zelanda ya es sábado por la mañana. In India, it's midnight, as somebody was telling me there. So, let's begin. We're going to welcome Mr. E. We're going to be talking to him because we want to know him. We want to ask him a lot of questions about his work because his work is just amazing, delicate, beautiful, colorful, and many things. Bueno, vamos a traer ya Mr. E. Um, vamos a buscarlo. Quiero hacerle muchas preguntas porque el origami de él, saben, es... Un origami muy lindo, colorido, difícil. Así que vamos a platicar con él. Veamos. Bye. Y acá está. Ok. Ya le enviamos la invitación. Buenas tardes. Hello, Mr. E. Good morning, everybody. How are you? <laughs> well, good morning for you. And for yeah, us. That I live in the future. You're all you're all living yesterday. Exactly. So it's exactly. Saturday for me, and it's going well already. You live in the future. For everybody over over here, everybody is happy because finally we are seeing your face. We are talking to you because we always see just your hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the voice. And your voice. So now everybody recognizes your voice, Mr. E. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the most uh, the funny coincidence is the photo I sent you where I had a mohawk was from last year's lockdown while really? I was working. I, I haven't had a mohawk since then. I just happened to, we go, went back into lockdown a few weeks ago. And so I was like, it's mohawk time again. So just by chance, I don't always have a mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it looks good. You know, my son is seven years old and he's watching, he likes Cobra Kai. 
and there is a character over there who has one and he tells me mommy i want one and i say no it's school time you cannot have one the holiday <laughs> he can have a mohawk in the holidays i don't know i don't think so he wants it blue <laughs> Yes. Bueno, para todos, este es nuestro querido Mr. E. Así que por acá estamos. Mr. E, before we begin, thank you so much for accepting my invitation. My pleasure. We are so, so happy. Uh, choosing one of your designs has been the biggest <laughs> battle in the world. Be believe me, nobody could get in agreement. Oh my God, it was so hard to choose one. Everybody over there is telling me, Mariela, I want still, I still want one number two, I still want number four. So they are battling there. And and don't worry, I will be making tutorials for those ones. I um I have a long list of tutorials because I get requests like every day, um of yeah people and some people are really funny, like they're really demanding. You have to do this. I'm like. No, sir, I don't have to do anything. I, I, I will if I feel like it, and I will. But this, this one has been sitting um, on the edge of my um, uh, a shelf in my kitchen for months because I'm like, I really should make a video for that one because it's really lovely. That's beautiful. But not today. Yeah. It, you know, the, I think the most attractive thing for everybody was the flower in the middle because it's, it's 3D, yeah. so everybody yeah. likes that. And that's the funny thing is, is that's what I don't like because I um where's my book because I keep all of my um tessellations in books ones like that are no use to me because I have I can't I can't flatten them exactly so I usually I'll fold those and then I'll give them away so I don't actually keep many of them at all because <laughs> I have a <laughs> so here's here's one of my boxes of tessellations Miren, um, tessellados. Ah! and they're all flat. They're all flat, so they so they can press the whole thing down and they'll be fine, except for this one. <laughs> uh, they're, they're not as good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Give me one minute because I have to tell them in Spanish, Mister E. They want to know everything. Mire, no worries, Mr. no worries. Mister E estaba enseñando el teselado número dos, el que todos me habían pedido. Se acuerdan? Fue tan difícil ponerse de acuerdo. Eh, y Mr. E dice que de todos los testelados el que menos le gusta es ese en Your Food <risa> entonces dice que ese es el testelado que menos le gusta, ¿saben por qué? porque es 3D, entonces él sacó su caja donde guarda los testelados y dice que todos los testelados son planos, los puede poner ahí, pero ese no, pero buenas noticias está pensando hacer el tutorial de ese y de los que, no, los que perdieron, así que excelente, Mr. E You know, I I usually don't f uh, fold hydrangeas because at the beginning, I remember like two years ago, I got this book and the first time when I opened the book, I, I am used to all the origami books that give you the instructions on how to fold one by one, step one by one. And when I opened this one and I, I just saw this, I was like, what is this? And I saw that there are no instructions. And I said, how can I do that? So I got frustrated and I quit. But finally, I was so curious and I began learning. And uh, that's how I saw your work. Because I have some friends from Taiwan, you know. She's Tai Yi Li. Uh, there is also La Larkamex. They are very good with tessellations and they told me, yeah, Mr. E, Mariela, Mr. E. And I said, who's Mr. E? And I saw your videos and I saw your work and I was fascinated. Mr. E, how did you begin folding? Um, um, in like, origami from the beginning, um, I've been folding for my, my whole life. Um, I was about seven. So I started folding paper cranes when I was a seven. You know the school, the the story of um, oh, what's her name? The the thousand paper cranes. The, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Sadako. Sadako. Uh, Sadako. Yeah. Sadako. So we learned Sadako. that we got we got read that story, and I was in primary school, so I was only in like year two, mm -hmm. like I was seven years old, um, and we learned to fold paper cranes, and I could just I just it it kind of fit well, and so I just folded it. And then I folded a, a thousand. Um, I was like, you know, why not? And then I, um, 
Yeah, I just found it really soothing because you can turn one flat piece of paper into anything. So then I started kind of going through all the origami books in my school library. Oh. And, and then I moved cities. And then so new library, new school, new public library would just go through the origami books. And then I moved again. Mm. And then I moved again. And then I moved again. Um, and so I would go to every time I'd go there, I'd be like, there's probably new origami books in all these libraries. And there was, so I'd learn all these designs. But what I found is that I'd just start, I'd start memorizing them. Um, and so I'd catch public transport. And then so I'd be on the bus or on the train and I'd fold um, origami out of my bus or train tickets. And the problem with it is that you only get one, one train ticket. So I started tearing the train tickets smaller and smaller. And then it was how many paper cranes could I make out of one train ticket? Ooh. And then they'd get smaller and smaller and smaller because all I wanted to do was see how many more could I make? Yeah. And so I started I had a lot of practice folding tiny little things purely because I didn't have much paper with me, oh, but not anymore. I carry paper with me everywhere. And so since then, I've been, I've been folding forever. Um, and then I moved back to Nelson in the, the, the top of the South Island of New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I started, I don't know, I was looking for something. I wasn't really like, you know, obsessively doing origami at, this, at the time, but I found a YouTube video on the Sonobi um, unit. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, that's amazing. So I started making different things out of Sonobis and then it was like, well, what else can I do with this? So I do variations and sync, sync points and then do it and then make it bigger and then different. Yeah. And so I do different things. Um, and then I got into the modulars. And so I just started making obsessively making all the different modulars I can. And cause I don't like keeping stuff. I just start giving it away. And so I work, I work, um, in an, in an office, I was working in an office here, but we've got offices all around. So over time with different training things and me visiting different offices, all the offices and all the desks just started getting filled up with origami. Oh, and is... they still are to this day. That was like 10 years ago. That it's everywhere. It's everywhere across the whole, um, the whole region. Um, and it was only about 2000 and I think 2017, mm -hmm. I came across just looking for um, another video on yes. YouTube, um, I came across some um, the hydrangea. And mm -hmm. so I started folding those and that is the most soothing um, design to fold. The, the, the two layered hydrangea is just absolutely perfect. It doesn't take much pre-creasing and it collapses down just like, it's just such a beautiful movement. So I started, you know, playing with that. But then and straight away, I'm like, well, what else can I do with this? Yeah. And and then I found a um a video to do the um do a two by two hydrangea tessellation. Mm -hmm. And when I made that, I realised that the back of it was just clovers. Um, so they're exactly the same thing. They're not they're not any different. They they are the reverse of each other. And then I just I I haven't stopped. And that was like 2017. So I've been folding them non-stop nearly every day for four years wow that's yeah because your tessellations they are i am so surprised to see how small you can fold you, you can fold really small designs and when i see your grease and i see your paper because i have the same paper and i say how can he fold this from this little sheet that is just 15 by 15 and i am so surprised yeah well well, um, I keep getting people messaging me and it's happened. It's getting more and more um, of people asking how I can fold grids so small, the, the pre-crease the grids without it turning into like fabric. Yeah. And I don't know. I have no idea. They, 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 you've, as you said, you've got the same paper. I, I'm not sure. It's just one of those things. It's just um, obsessive patience. So what I can do, like say this piece here, for instance, this one here it's it's gonna be a long a long piece it'll take me months to actually finish um but if you have a look the the grid the grid lines yeah you can get that in there uh-huh <gasps> it's so tiny wow. yeah they're, they're miniature um and the grid itself took me like, like days days and days because 
I'm not in any rush. I don't need to do it. I've got a thousand other things going that I could just pick up and do a little bit of folding. So yeah. I just slowly go through and do it. And then I'll slowly go through and collapse it. And some pieces I can sit there, especially when they're really small, mm -hmm. they just get tiring. So I'll fold a bit and go, no, I can't do this. And I'll throw it into a box and just leave it there for, for ages um, until I see it again. And then I'll be like, I'll, I'll give it another go. So then for this one, I'll pick it up and I'll do one more, one more loop around in making um, hexagons. And then I'll be like, yeah, that's enough. That's exhausting. Plus it's two in the morning. I'll stop that and I'll throw it aside and then I won't pick it up for another, you know, few days. Wow. Yeah, as I tell you, I have the same paper or the harmony paper and I see it and I, oh, some people is asking uh, if your, your paper doesn't get uh, ripped. Yeah. Because of, it does. No, it rarely does ever. No, no, the, no, it, yeah. I, I don't, and I, I can't have, don't have any answer. I have no idea. It, um, it's just, yeah, I'm really gentle with it when I'm creasing. So I crease one way and then I'll gently reverse that crease. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go to the next one yeah. and then I'll gently reverse that crease. Um, but I'm not doing anything special. It's just that I've been folding grids now for four years obsessively. Yeah. And if yeah. you do something that obsessively, you get really good. Yeah, you're an expert. Yeah, yeah. you're an expert. All of a so sudden, it's just one of those things. But yeah, oh so it's, I, I, I do get questions a lot. Like, you'd be amazed how um, how engaged, you'd, you'd know how engaged the Oregonian community is when they get in there. Like, I see your stories recently, and there's just endless. And it's like, it's really good. So I get all these questions, and I'm like, I just practice, practice more. Yeah. That's a Just good, practice a good lot. answer, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Give me a break, Mr. Uh, Mr. E. I have to uh, translate. Wow, that was amazing. Oh, as I tell you, I, I cannot believe it. How can you do that? Well, Lupita no se le rompe el papel. Dice él que él, a pesar de que revierte lo que son los pliegues, no se rompe. Miren, le pregunté a Mr. E cómo comenzó él con el origami y me dice que como todos, él comenzó desde chiquitito. Le gustaba mucho plegar lo que son las grullas y comenzó a plegar lo que son, conoció la historia de Sadako Sasaki, comenzó a plegar lo que son las mil grullas y así él fue avanzando. Pero lo que me gusta de él es que él dice que se movió, se movía de ciudad en ciudad. Entonces siempre iba a las bibliotecas de cada ciudad donde él estaba, iba a buscar libros de origami. Entonces, una vez encontró el del sonobe, unos sonobes y se enamoró de los sonobes. Entonces vino él y comenzó a plegar modulares y para él se le abrió otro mundo. Entonces, después de eso, finalmente, él encontró un video de YouTube cómo se plegaban las hydrangeas, las hortensias. Se enamoró y dice que desde entonces no ha parado de plegar lo que son hortensias. Tiene cuatro años más o menos solamente plegando esto, haciendo tramas. Las tramas las hace de 15 por 15. Ese es el papel más grande que él utiliza. Y las hace milimétricas y dice él que no ocupa ningún instrumento, sino que todo lo hace con paciencia. A veces se tarda varios días plegando una sola trama. Imagínense. ¡Wow! I am not going to ask you how how many designs you have created because they are so, so many. But I would like to ask you, for example, which is the biggest grid you have folded? The, the, the biggest or the, the no, most No, the one grid? with the, yeah, the one with more divisions. Okay, so um, I think the biggest out of, say, a 7.5 centimeter square I've done is 64 divisions 64 divisions yes yeah, 64 and i believe that was 128 in the diagonals what with a 7.5 yeah. paper sheet of paper <gasps> yeah and it took me a really long time because it was really hard so i just put it aside and went i can't do this it's exhausting um so i'd stop and then um yeah so 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 that's that's the most and then that that tessellation i don't even know if i finished it yeah because it was just ridiculous like it was it was ridiculous so i just went uh but i did i did that and then say out of a um wow. out of a 
15 centimetres square. Um, I mean, easily, uh, yeah, probably 128, I'd say, because that's, you know, that's 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So I think I've done, yeah, from that. And the only other person I've seen that does um, that ridiculous size grids out of small pieces of paper is um, Simon from uh, his handle is Koi Fish Folder. Yeah. Um, he's the only other person I've seen that just does, just, I don't know what it is, it's just obsession um, <laughs> to get it tiny. So, yeah. So the the biggest thing is is I never rush. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's like, That's a like I don't I don't care. No, I'm not in any rush. It's fine. So I have pieces of paper at home that I'm working like a bunch that I'm working on, and then I have pieces at work that I'm just slowly working on. So they're at work and they're at home. Um. And so I'll get to work and I'll you know start doing some stuff. I'll get on a phone call and then I'll just pick up a grid and I'll just keep methodically folding it smaller and smaller and people come over and like Ellie what are you folding I'm like I don't know I, I can't I don't know no plans I'm just folding a grid to some stupidly small size and then I'll figure out what to do with it afterwards yeah but the problem with that is that I often have grids at really specific sizes like I'm dividing it down and I know that this is going to be something really specific mm -hmm. and I have no idea what I'd plan to fold with it by the time I finished the grid. I've forgotten. Mm. And I'm like, there was a good idea in there, something that I've worked it out on a calculator to see what grid I'd need. And I'm like, I don't know what it was now. So I've started taking photos um, and recording ideas of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I don't find myself with um, a whole bunch of half finished work that I had no idea where I was going with it. <laughs> wow, wow. But but you say patience, that's one of the important points not to be in a rush you know you make me smile because sometimes i have to fold a grid that is um six, 32 by 32 with a 30 30 by 30 centimeters paper and i said oh my god that's that's gonna be so hard and you are talking about 120 yeah. divisions <laughs> yeah well some of the grid divisions i really love doing the maths afterwards so if I've, if I've got like a um, a 15 centimeter piece or, or 7.5 centimeter paper and then I split it into something like, you know, 50 divisions I did recently, it's like, you like work out how big they are and we get, Simon and I get some of them down so the divisions are like, you know, 2 mil or 1.7 mil, I think it worked out, millimeters thick, it's like that is, that is getting ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, it is pretty ridiculous. Um, and then you work out once you've done all the grid folding, how many triangles are in this? And I did one recently, I think it was this one, when I'd finished creasing it, there's 6,000 little triangles in there. And so that's why, wow. yeah, so it's, yeah, that's why I love putting up to the light and seeing them backlit because you can see your grid folds perfectly. Exactly. And it just makes me smile going, I pointlessly folded this piece of paper like hundreds and hundreds of times. Now yeah, look at that, that's pretty cool. Oh my God, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mire, le pregunté más o menos cuán, cómo es la trama más complicada que él ha creado y me dice que lo que él dice es que no hay que tener prisa. Y ustedes tienen que plegar la trama primero, plieguen con paciencia. Él dice que se pone a hablar por teléfono, se pone a trabajar en el trabajo cuando recibe llamadas telefónicas y él está plegando. Él puede plegar en un papel de 7.5 por 7.5, puede plegar 120 divisiones. Imagínense, dividir un papelito tan chiquito en 120 divisiones. Y dice él que llegó a tantas divisiones que en ese papel de 15 por 15 habían más de 6,000 cuadritos, triangulitos. O sea, es algo totalmente loco. No utiliza nada, herramientas, todo lo hace poco a poco. En el trabajo le preguntan, ¿qué estás plegando? Y él dice, no, todavía no lo sé, porque él primero pliega las tramas para después elaborar lo que son los diseños. Wow. Do you have any design in particular? You have beautiful designs. You have so many designs. But is there anyone, any design that you feel really proud or maybe your favorite design? Um, yeah, um, so a lot of, I mean, I, as we said, a lot of mine are all um, hydrangea and clover variations. So that, you know, so the, the main technique of um, doing is from Shuzo Fujimoto. Um, and so all I've done is kind of adapted and adapted different things. But one thing I'm really proud of, and I'm, 
haven't had this confirmed, but I I don't I've never seen anyone anywhere I'd search do it so you'd have a hydrangea surrounded by clovers. I've never seen that before anywhere. And then I I um accidentally came across it one like just by folding while I was on a conference call. So a long conference call at work and I had my headset on, I was just folding and then when I realized what I'd done and I couldn't figure out how I did it. Um yeah. I couldn't couldn't figure it out. So I spent three nights, um, three days in a row, was just sitting on the couch, you know, with music on, just trying to figure out what I did. And then I discovered, you know, how to do it. Um, and I looked around, I could not find it anywhere. So the fact that I couldn't find, I was pretty proud of that specific thing because I'd learned how to do that. So you've got, you know, as I said, the clover is the back of the hydrangea and the hydrangea is the back of the clover mm -hmm. and how to get them on the same side. So they just reverse and you can change it. It opened up everything so I can, you can do anything. You can, you can, you can do any kind of pattern and variation and um, layering it up you like. So because of stuff like that, you know, you can wow. get, so Meeting. all it is is just flat clovers and then there's just hydrangeas inserted on. Um, and kind of since I started sharing the uh, videos and things and showing people how I was doing it, um, it, honestly, it's just exploded. Like people are amazing. So you show them how to do something and then they will go and take it to the next level. Exactly. And it's been great. There's some, there's some fantastic, um, uh, folders from Japan, um, who just keep they just keep going and going and coming up these different things. And every now and then I get tagged in something saying, you know, inspired by Mr. E. And I'm like, hey, man, that's awesome. Like, that is huge, huge. But one, one thing I'm really proud of um, recently, um, well, two things, actually, was this just little flower. I did show everyone oh, how look, I did do it. That one, yes. Yeah because it's so simple and like it's one of those things i don't like to say that i've designed something a lot of it i'm just i've just adapted or just come across it but mm -hmm. it's it's a combination of stuff like when with origami tessellations you're going to get to a point where there's it, you know it's all just variations of variations of different things and inspired by different stuff so this one i um that's, i got the idea yeah i got the idea from ali uh, Ali Bermani. Ali um, Bermani, yeah. Yeah, yeah, who did yeah. the um, Sakura Star. And I used that kind of collapsing fold that he uses for that. Um, I I figured out how to do uh, Ligia Montoya's flower using a different process that is way easier. That's this, the same process as the Sakura Star. So playing and playing, and I just kind of came up with this star. And the reason I love it is because I don't like hexagon twists. Oh, yeah. At all. Well, you never I don't use like them. them. I, yeah. I never use them because exactly. I don't like them. They are annoying. Um, <laughs> sometimes they just pop in perfectly and I'm like, yes, fantastic. And some other times, no, they just crumple the paper and I can't get it to pop. To t and I hate them. So um, there was a, I think it was Eric Jurd's book and he's got a, hexag a, um, yeah, a hexagon twist flower. And so it's basically exactly the same thing without a hexagon twist. So I'm like, absolute win. I get to make this lovely tessellation without having to do that that one fold I just can't stand. And the beauty about it is if you can get the backlight. Yeah. Um, that looks amazing like that. I know, they're gorgeous. And then you get these little stars. Yeah. So it looks like a snowflake. Just, yeah. And so they were just discoveries. And then I post that online. And then next thing there's people doing all sorts of stuff with it. And I'm like, this is so good. And the other yeah. one, one of the other ones I'm really happy with is, um, so the triphilia um, tessellation where you can, I don't know who, who actually discovered that, but, but you just get, get triangle twists yeah. and then you pop them out into star puffs and things like that. Um, you can, yeah, so you can collapse them in to make, mm -hmm. you know, triphilias. And then I realized, well, there's six, there's six points on a hexagon. The triphilia pops in three of them. Mm -hmm. What happens when you pop in the other three or if you pop in opposing sides and then it opened up this thing. And again, I've never seen anyone do that. And I'm thinking, well, it's just an experimenting thing. So this one here. Ah, that's beautiful. Oh my goodness. Isn't it? That it's, one. So, it's so simple. And the beauty thing is you've got a hexagon tile in the middle 
Yeah. And then you've got these off pentagons in the corners and, and rectangles. And the only reason I came up with this variation, and there's t I've folded tons of them, um, because it opens it up to be able to do stuff like this. Oh my goodness, look at that one. And the <gasps> fact that that is one piece of paper and you've mm -hmm. just got these things, they look like they're stuck on. Like, I find that so, so satisfying that you can see you make a whole thing in triangle twists, nice and simple, and they're just beautiful. And then you just like can adapt and add on whatever you want afterwards. And I just, I find that pretty amazing. And the only reason I came up with it was because I'd made a, um, a triphilia design yeah. and my partner just goes, could you extend those out to make it like a longer mm. triangle? And I was mm. like, you probably can. And then I found out and then you, you can. You yeah. did? Oh, Wh wow. Which is, I tell you, incidentally, this one here, yes, this that's ridiculous one. thing. So that's done Can as um, that one. That's a oh my spread. It'll be a spread hex tessel uh, tessellation, mm -hmm. which I will finish off. And then wow. I'll turn them all into triangle twists. Mm -hmm. So they'll all be like that. And then I'm going to turn this after they're all triangle twists into a hexagon of three of these. So it'll be three of this pattern. So this will extend up into a big triangle and then back <laughs> down again. But the piece of paper should be about the exact same size as this, but so dense it'll fit three of this entire thing in the one piece of paper. Because that's what I thought and went, that will look cool. It, you have no limit. No, well, that's the thing. There is no limit until the paper can't handle it. And then I have to go to bigger paper, which I don't like. I like using small paper. It's more fun. Yeah, because I see those ones are just 15 by 15 centimeters. Yeah, and you can work them so well. Wow. Yeah. And I've got, I've got some slightly bigger paper, but... I'll tell you what the um if everything if I can do everything out of a seven point five centimeter square I will because it's the perfect size for your hands that I don't have to use a table so I can be walking around grid folding just in my hands I can be waiting in line somewhere and just be folding a grid um and there's there's, there's these That's ladies in one of the local yeah, there's ladies in this local sushi shop who find me hilarious because I'll be waiting in the sushi shop and I'll be folding some grids and they're like, oh, very nice. And then I'll pull something out of my wallet and put it on top of the cabinet and walk up. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you're amazing. You you develop that skill because those skills, I, I, I don't see them anywhere. So it's very difficult to reach that level. Yeah. And the, the trick, everyone, if you want to know how to get really good at stuff like this, it's don't sleep very much because what you'll find is you have more hours in the day to obsessively do something. Mm. I don't recommend it. It's not a good thing, but <laughs> if you're not going to sleep, you may as well obsessively do something and then you get really good at it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I like it. <laughs> Mire, le he preguntado a Mr. E, es una respuesta muy compleja. Eh, le pregunté que de todos sus teselados de cuáles se siente muy orgulloso y él dijo que él comenzó plegando lo que es Shuso Fujimoto, pero en lo que él se siente orgulloso es que él ha mezclado lo que son los clovers, las personas que saben sobre teselado saben que es un clover, con las eh, hydrangeas. Él tiene clovers mezclados con hydrangeas, lo cual es cierto, no se ve en el libro de, del señor, del maestro Shuso Fujimoto, solamente hydrangeas. Y él dice que todo lo que él hace, fíjense bien, es con papel de 15 por 15. Y 7.5 por 7.5. No le gusta el papel grande porque el papel grande no se puede manipular. Él dice que va caminando por la calle, él va a comprar, él habla por teléfono y él tiene un papel de 7.5 por 7.5. Es para él es la perfecta, el perfecto, el tamaño perfecto porque lo puede manipular. Con un papel grande no puede estar doblando en una tienda. Entonces, esa es la medida perfecta. Y por ahí enseñó unas flores amarillas que lo inspiraron eh, la Sakura Flower de Ali Bahmani. Entonces, a él le gustó mucho esa y plegó unas flores similares, pero hizo lo que es un, casi un teselado. Ese, miren qué lindo. Ese viene inspirado por la flor Sakura de Ali Bahmani. Y también tiene unas... Unos inspirados en las flores de Ligia Montoya. Entonces, 
él lo que hace es adaptar. Pero imagínense, no adapta solo la flor, sino que adapta todo el, el, el teselado, todo lo que es el, el, el lo que es, es su trabajo, porque el trabajo de él es bien complejo. ¡Wow! Oh my God, that's, that's impressive. It's really impressive. People over there were saying that you are really serious business and uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Without taking any of it seriously. <laughs> Mr. E, I, I see a lot of uh, your tessellations. Your tessellations are fantastic. And um, do you have some other tessellations over there that you can show us? Because your, your work is so beautiful and I know you have a big box there, so. I Miren do. la cajita de teselados de Mr. E. Nos va a enseñar algunos. <laughs> yeah, I do have a lot. The, um, the problem is light behind me, so they all get kind of backlit. Um, I brought one out. So... Miren lo de él. Ahí lo va a poner ahí para que podamos ver bien lo que es la figura. La parte de atrás, wow. Y solo utiliza so, papel de 15 por 15. So the That's beautiful thing great. about ones like this is this is just clover tiles. Mm -hmm. So they're just clover tiles. They're just done at different shapes. Yeah. Um, and once you get into it, it, it becomes, there's a guy on Instagram, um, uh, Arseni Coombe. Uh -huh. um, oh, oh, yes, I don't know where he's from, but he, I know he's on military placement, but um, he made this really good point that he said, he, he does, like, let's be honest, he actually designs um, a lot of, of amazing different tessellation um, collapses and stuff. But he um, he said once he got into doing the, the clovers and things, he realized that we can basically just draw with them. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, that's exactly what you're doing because you can um, you can do whatever whatever you really like. So one of the one of the beautiful changes is I look at they that. just mm. and that is so simple change you've got the next mm. layered clover down there that just it you know rotates it to a diamond and then you've got the stack so but it gives it this beautiful um and on the back you've got just mm. hydrangea petals but yeah. in different sizes exactly yeah so what i'm what i've been kind of um working on recently is is Okay, so I'll, okay, I'll explain this to you. So this here, there's my silly book. There you go. This here, when I folded this originally, mm -hmm. I you fold it down as different size clovers, but these little squares here, yes, they they weren't there. I added those in afterwards, like when you when you do a new layer on a hydrangea. Um, wow. So. You have to fold in the back and then you, yeah, there's a process to go and add in. And that's what these little pink flowers are here. Mm -hmm. So those are added in afterwards. Um, and it's easier to do that because um, there's a whole process to, to fold in, you know, to add hydrangea um, exactly. petals, layers. It's a whole process to do that. So it's fine. What I've now been obsessively trying to figure out is if you can, you have to do a really dense grid start off really big like this one here where you start off the flowers really big and then work down to transition between mm -hmm. um all those different layers so you've got a big clover going into exactly. a larger hydrangea going into a smaller hydrangeas and so to be able to do that fluidly um so yeah that's that's been the real the real test and then adding in different hydrangea layers <laughs> look at that the sizes are so different yeah and so it and what it is at the back it's like a real clean um clover tessellation but then you get little things like this that's got a flowers in the center of those and that's just the back of it because what i wanted was this mm -hmm. <gasps> that's beautiful and, and they, they look so perfect the, yeah well They usually are. That's one thing I, I absolutely love when I finish, when I do a grid and then I hold it up to the light, I check all the intersections to see if they're, and they're not really, they're usually pretty perfect. And I go, mm, that is, that is fantastically satisfying. <laughs> But yeah, so, wow. you know, so it's like, because there's so many different um, combinations of the exact same thing, mm -hmm. it starts to become, so satisfying because look how different they look totally different wow and 
And this one still remains one of my absolute favorites. Um, That's purely because beautiful. it's got that lovely border. The and border it raises is up awesome, and, yeah. And it looks like the flowers just kind of just stuck on there. Exactly. Like if you put another one yep. on the side, oh. it looks it like does that. not look real. And so I like, yeah. And so the other one is I, um, I've got a, look at that. I've yes. got, got a real obsession because um, to the number 13, being able to tessellate 13 things yeah, because it's a prime number, but it tessellates really well. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to put in, the th having 13 flowers on one piece of paper is, um, is very satisfying. Yeah. You this know Harmony is, Paper, right? Uh, huh? You harmony know paper? paper? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. You. This is, and I've used a lot of paper in my life, and that is the best paper the best. I've ever used. Yeah. It's it's thin, it holds reverse creases really well, because some paper, if you reverse the crease back and forth and put any pressure on the intersection, it's going to tear immediately. But this stuff is really quite strong, really thin, and the colours are gorgeous. Like, they're, they're beautiful. But yeah, exactly. so, like, this, this one here, um, it's so satisfying and very wow it was very hard to figure out how to fold this it was very very hard it looks now i can do hard. it fine it is hard like now i can do it fine um there's, there's, there's a couple of ladies from um i think one was from okinawa and she does mm -hmm. so she first did so you'd have it so there'd be a clover tessellation they're all flat and then she'd pop out four clover tiles mm -hmm. and then you Pop it, pop those clover tiles out from the back yeah. and turn them into a hydrangea manually. Mm -hmm. And that there, so that's how I figured out how to do this. But now I can start at the center and then just fold outwards piece by piece and it, wow. it just goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oh, oh, you did a really good video of all of, um, of a lot of my work. That was fantastic. It had a real good good coverage of different things you made you made it so difficult for me i had to cut yeah, a to lot of pictures of the back lids because it had to be one minute <laughs> you need <laughs> a half an hour video <laughs> wow mr e things like this the little zigzagged edges and things really add a nice detail to it only in my dreams um, i can do that only in my dreams <laughs> wow and here's Here's another one of that, um, Look of that one, but it worked yeah. out, it's just a perfect size for it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And see, and here's one, I've seen a number of people post this, um, this yeah. arrangement um, over the, over time. Yes. Um, because it's really, it's a really good mental one to do. Because you're fitting three different types of clover setups in the corners with the hydrangea as well. So it's a, it's a good, um, you know, arrangement of different things. Yeah. And someone posted that. Looks someone beautiful. folded this this week and posted it. And I was, yeah, they look lovely. They look beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Hi, mystery. So it many. Took, it took me so long to to make to be able to make one clover. <laughs> And I'm talking about a simple one with five things, and I, I'm going to take years if I want to do something like that. <laughs> yes, it, it does. It does. It does. It takes years. Right? But yeah. yeah, it really does. It really does. But, um, and then, so like, something like that, at that size, I just that find it so so re soothing to have. Like, I find them so nice to just hold. So I have them in my wallet. Mm-hmm. That pressed in my wallet. My um, my lovely lady got me this book made. Um, that so that I've got is a, very famous. That's got very my famous. Mr. E diary, and I just carry things around in it. Oh, it's um, oh, Okay, you ask what I'm proud of. This mm. one here, I am exceptionally proud of because mm -hmm. it was I've never seen this before either, and it was really quite a mind bend to try and figure out. So. Anyone who folds clover tessellations will know how hard this is to actually get. So what you've got is you've got four clovers there right next to a big clover, but they line up perfectly. Yeah. So you, you can't do this easily because this uses way more paper yeah. than four there because it's got intersections at the back. 
is using way more paper on that one than the ones adjacent. Yeah. So you have to use up more paper in the intersection just to be able to have it fit together. Yeah, there's Koi Fishfold and those. He's there, he's there, yeah. There. Yeah, Simon knows. It, it, and it takes a lot of practice and kind of getting your head around it because it is confusing. If yeah. you put it through the backlight, so you can see see how dense it is exactly. um at the all these ones but at the, those ones that's just one piece one one layer of paper there mm -hmm. and to do that you need a, like you've got these intersection points where there's flaps and then there's a larger flap because that uses up a whole bunch of paper adjoining those two so when you're folding it to then collapse it in yeah it's confusing as so i'll get it one day and then i'll try and do it another time and go, oh, no, I don't understand. I don't know what I did. <laughs> and then I have to pull this apart to go like, oh, how did I do that? And then I'll have to do that repetitively until it sinks in. Wow. That's great. Wow. And that was folded with 7.5 paper, right? No, no. This, this one was 15, 15, I believe. Oh. Yeah, that'd be a 15. Um, all my ones folded from 7.5 seem to find their way down the bottom. Oh, yeah, because they are very small. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I found a lot. There we go. Wow. Miren, todos los, los que tiene. Ya le voy a explicar todo lo que él está diciendo. Oh, I love that one. That one is famous. Isn't it nice? It's so, so simple, that one. That's what I love. You say, oh, it's so, so simple. It's not. No, they're not simple to make. They're not simple to make. But look how simple they, the design is. Like there's no like extra stage, just nice and clean. Um, that's gorgeous. Eso lo plegó con papel de 7.5. Oh my God, that's so small. Yes. See, and that's a really simple pattern. Like it looks really simple. Mm -hmm. And on but the back, it's, it's not. It's mm. not. No, it's not. No, don't get me wrong. They're not simple. They're really complicated to make. Yeah. But um, the the end result looks simple, and I like that. And especially, it's really good. Like when you see um, children will see my design, say, "Oh, that's really pretty," and then their parents will look and go, "How did you do that?" Mm. I'm like, "Ah, oh. you understand how hard this is," and they're like. No, is that one piece of paper? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, I don't understand. And I'm like, of course you don't. But kids just look and go, oh, that's pretty. And adults yeah, that's are like, the only thing they can say. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah. Hey, that's so one that got... cute. Mm. That's very pretty. It's like yesterday, I think, one day before yesterday, you posted one that I told you that it was cute. And after one friend from Taiwan, she folded it already, and I said, "Oh, that's great." <laughs> um, uh, it's uh, oh, Tan. Pregunta, um, my lo lovely friend Tan from um, yeah. Malaysia. She won't yeah. be on here because it's like three a.m. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, she told me she's um, going to see she, it later. Yes, yeah. She, we've been in contact for a few years, and she um. She just keeps getting faster and faster to be able to like figure out how to she's do really stuff. So I posted good. these. Yeah, she's she is. She's really good. She's one of, the, of the post, persons I've... who talked to me about you. She told me, Mariela, if you want to go farther away than hydrangeas, you have to see Mr. E's videos, and that's how I found Mr. E. Mr. E, somebody asked over there, do you fold only one of each design? No, um. Like I've like once I do a design, do I do I not fold it again? Mostly, a lot of the times, yes. So like, um, mm -hmm. that's because I'm just I'm just kind of trying out different combinations. So mm -hmm. you've got this one here, um, and that's, that's lovely. That's it's got, lovely. It's got crack. I've never folded that again. Um, that's just that's just a once off because I was like, that's pretty cool. Um. I'll post that. And what I love to do is I'll post, you'll notice I post photos always of the front and of the back. Mm -hmm. Because I want to be able to have people see, can you figure out how to do this? I don't want to be like, oh, look at this lovely design, but I'm not going to tell you how to do it. No, I want to tell everyone how to do all of these. I want everyone to know how to do all of it. And if you actually want to learn, 
then you can figure out all this stuff. And I'm, I just want to share. Yeah. Um, so it's great because I'll post, post one, forget about it. And then I'll have, I had someone, there were like three people in a week who posted this design saying, oh, inspired by Mr. E. And I'm like, I don't even remember folding that. And then yeah. I look back. Yeah, but maybe and, they were trying to fold that one and they found something completely different. Yeah. And that's, and that's their own thing. And I'm like, that's, yeah, that's fantastic. Keep, keep going. But that was, it's funny because that was the reason I started doing, um, doing tutorials mm -hmm. because you, there is nothing to tell people how to do this. As you said, Shuzo Fujimoto's book there, I don't like origami books generally. Mm -hmm. I don't like them because they're very hard for the complicated stuff. They're very hard to fold, mm -hmm. to follow what's going on. Like I had some Japanese um, origami books when I was a kid. They would go from step six to step seven and you'd look and you'd be like, that's not one step step i don't know how you got from six to seven i don't That's read japanese yeah. i can't tell what you did so i had to figure out for ages whereas now we have youtube and you can see exactly and you can reverse and rewind and go and see how you did that and so yeah then you can push it out there so everyone can learn and figure out their own things yeah especially with your beautiful designs oh my god that's crazy look at that one. Oh, that looks so beautiful look. is it yeah it's very cute it's beautiful really beautiful i might fold oh, that again my God. oh miren qué cosa más linda con papel de 7.5 por 7.5 <laughs> miren ya le voy a explicar lo que ha dicho porque ha dicho tantas cosas que tienen que saber ay mr e there we go Let's and so this one was one of the first the one I saw from uh, Sandy Coom, and I tell you what, that is that is a beautiful little design. That, that's so beautiful, and yeah. Then on the back, complicated. Look at those yeah. small things over there. Yeah, that's when when it gets a little bit confusing, right? <laughs> When, and I do all my work, so when it's real small, this is the only tool I use. Ah! I, I, said, I don't use anything else. I just use my fingers and a, and a wooden skewer, like a, like a toothpick. That's all, that's all I use. Um, yeah. Because you get down there and you have to sit there and put the tiniest bit of pressure to pop that in and then push it in and then... Wow. All day. All that's day, the only, yeah, that's the only thing that I have seen in your pictures, the toothpick. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So nothing else, just the toothpick and no. the fingers. Wow. And I'll never use, I don't use tweezers. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, someone just said it has that fisheye effect, doesn't it just? It kind of has that kind of rounded, yeah, it's such a, such a great layer. Wow. Yeah. Oh so I don't God. use tweezers. I don't use anything else. But yeah, just just a toothpick. Yeah. Look. So your words are big inspiration, and I appreciate your restless nature. Oh yeah, you have a restless nature. We can see that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the funniest thing is, is that I'm um i i I'm quite happy to spend a lot of time. I spend a lot of time by myself. Um, and I have a family and things, but I um yeah, I'll stay up late. So I just spend a lot of time in utter silence. Um. Yeah, so restless and uh, constantly moving hands. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So you're always folding. Yeah. Or doing something or drawing. Um, yeah, yeah, always doing something. Yeah, because I say, I, I saw a picture of you that it caught my attention that it said, this was done in a work day and you have like four or five different models. And I said, wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah, because I um I, I I run workshops um and do train and do training and things. Mm -hmm. And so while, while I'm doing training, even if I'm facilitating and talking to groups of people, I'll I'll still have something in my hands and be like, yeah, that's a good point. And I'll just craze this and we'll chat and we'll carry on. And then I'll walk over and put um, a piece of origami down in something, someone, and just keep keep going. And what I found amazing, because I talk a lot, and I talk with my hands a lot, so I'm sitting there doing this, and I'm talking, I'm asking questions, but the whole time I'm folding, then I put a dragon down in front of someone, and that I, this happened like a couple of months ago, they're like, where did you get that? And I'm like, 
I, I just, just folded, folded it in front it. of you, <laughs> right in front of you. And the, one of the ladies was like, yeah, I was wondering what you're doing. The other one was like, I didn't even notice. You know, I was folding. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That, yeah. Right now, for example, when I am translating, you are falling, right? Yeah. Great. That's great. Okay, literally, <laughs> I am going to translate to these people because I have a lot to tell them and you continue folding. Wow. Mire, eh, ha dicho muchas cosas, pero le voy a resumir lo más importante. Dice que él se siente muy, muy satisfecho porque él ha combinado formas, ha combinado lo que son figuras y ha combinado plegados. No solamente lo que son las hydrangeas, sino que también lo que son los clover. Ustedes eh, van a ver, Clover es el cuadro. Entonces, él ha combinado todo. Lo que él dice es que él es perfeccionista. Y, por ejemplo, él está plegando todo el día. Él cuando está, no puede estar sin hacer nada. En este momento yo estoy traduciendo, él está plegando. Le gusta plegar, hacer las, las tramas. Dice que es súper perfeccionista y que él ve la parte de atrás. La parte de atrás, por eso él se siente orgulloso de mostrarles el frente y la parte de atrás, porque la parte de atrás les está diciendo qué tan complicado es un trabajo. Y él lo deja todo perfecto. Para él todo tiene que estar perfecto, tanto lo que es la parte de atrás como la parte de adelante. No utiliza herramientas, no utiliza uh, lo que son pinzas, no. Lo único que utiliza él es su palillo. Y dice que para él el mejor papel es el de Harmony. Especialmente el de 7.5 porque eso los puede meter en su cartera. Y su esposa les regaló esa agenda. Entonces él en su agenda tiene solamente eh, sus hydrangeas. Todas están ahí. Wow, mystery. People cannot believe it. Imagine. <laughs> Somebody's asking you there. <laughs> um, no. Sorry, sorry, Kate. No, you can't. Uh, You need you need forty diagonals. Um, you do. It is. What Somebody it's, asked it's, me about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I told them, no. so, she yeah. says this. You have to fold everything. I said, you, you, Mr. You, e. you actually do. Yeah. And, um, yeah. It does take time. It does take a bit of time, especially. Like, I, I know. So twenty, twenty is fine. But when you start doing forty on the diet, yeah, it does start to just take longer. And I'm lucky people didn't want to do this one. Um. Because this one, it's close. Lucky, it was very, it was very close. But this one is, um, this is forty by, yeah, for forty divisions with forty diagonals. Ooh. Yeah. So that would have taken everyone a lot longer to do the grid, and then um, a lot longer to fold. Wow. Yeah. I, but I'll tell you something. I don't know if anyone's watched um, my uh, Clover series on um on YouTube, because if anyone asks me any questions, I say, go and watch that. I, I put in a lot of explanation on the, the, the theory behind it and all the different techniques, but it's really cool. So see this, to figure out how many grids I used for this, it is seven clovers across the top. And the formula is um, the, the amount of clovers you've got times six minus two. So Seven by six, 42 minus two, it's a 40 division grid. So you can work that out straight away just by looking at it. And I can go, oh, I know how, what grid they used for that. Yeah. And then you can go and fold. Wow. Para los que querían ese diseño, la trama era mucho más complicada. Pero él les va a hacer un video. Y acuérdense que Mr. E tiene un, su canal de YouTube. Mírenlo porque él comienza desde lo más básico, explicando lo que son los clovers, lo que son hydrangeas. Así que sigan a Mr. E en YouTube. Mr. E, we are really thankful for your YouTube channel because there are not any channel. I haven't seen any channel just devoted to hydrangeas. No. <laughs> yeah. There are many that they just fold one hydrangea, one design, but not just hydrangeas. But yours is only hydrangeas in your designs, and it's very unique. Your channel is very unique. And, I, and, and I'm glad people are enjoying it. Um, I do get a lot of feedback, and it's really good to know, because um, I'll tell you something. I am not on social media um, any other way except for doing origami. I, um, I got off social media in about 2012 and, and haven't. So none of my person, which is why you don't see my face. Yeah. Because it's not about me. It's about what I'm, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want people to know about, it's not about me. It's just about the art. And I want people to learn that. 
The only reason I'm on Instagram is because um, someone I work with at a community arts um, centre here um, told me I was being selfish by not sharing and showing people what I do because I'd make stuff and I'd bring it down to the art centre and I'd just leave it there. And the yes. collection would just grow and grow and people were like, who's making this? And um, I'd never, you know, show anyone. So he said I had to go and actually get online and start sharing things. Um, and so that's how this, that's how my, um, my Instagram started because I had to get it. And then you get so many questions like, well, I'm going to show everyone what my obsession is. And then if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. If you don't, I don't care. That's fine. Um, that's what I, that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, it kind of got stuck on hydrangeas and clovers and just stayed there for years. I think it's not stuck. You are growing there in that field yeah very niche market excellent excellent and we are really happy because of that believe me oh, i love it i just love your i love to see your pictures and i also i was enjoying the one that the, the account you have with the mushrooms oh yeah because my so, husband yeah. he loves mushrooms he's obsessed with the lion mane oh. Uh, oh, see, we don't have those here. I've always wanted to find one because so, they're amazing. Yeah, and even he drinks some powders and something with that lion mane because he says, oh, that's the best thing. So it is. I like your account. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, there's a lot of different there's a lot of different bright colored mushrooms and different things that grow around New Zealand. So I just started getting into it and then um thought I'd love taking the photos. I haven't posted much on that account for ages because of lockdown. Um, we weren't, you know, I wasn't going to go out into the forest and go and search for mushrooms too much last year. Um, but yeah, it's really funny because I get suddenly I'll get all these people following me on that account that are origami handles. And I said, no, it's good. So now we know how two things about you. We know that you love hydrangeas and you love mushrooms too. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mr. E. Can you show us the grill we're going to use for making your beautiful design today? All right, so here it is. Miren, esa es lo que es la trama que él va a utilizar para el día de hoy. Miren, ahí está la trama de 40 por, que son 20 diagonales de un lado, 20 del otro, y la división de 20, 20. Wow. So that, Great. that'll be yeah, 20 divisions this way um, and then 40 divisions this way. Um, and I keep having people asking me how to do these. The beauty with 15 centimeter and 7.5 centimeter paper, they are perfectly divisible by three and by five. Mm. So, so this one here, if you want to make a, um, a 20 or a 40 division grip, you just measure to three centimeters with a ruler mm -hmm. and make a mark. Then you fold to that point, yeah? And what you'll have is you'll have a big side and a small side. The small side is two divisions, mm -hmm. and the big side is three. So you fold that in half and then you can line. So you only have to make one little pencil mark on, on two sides. Okay. And then you've got it to five. And then you halve all the grids. So five, 10, 20, 40. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, know, and I, so with many people ask me, and I I gave them the same advice you are telling me because a friend who knows about Greece, she told me that, so that's very useful to know. And then, so with the seven point five centimeter, it's divisible perfectly again. It's um, you've got one point five, um, yeah, one point five is is a fifth, so you can just mm -hmm. make a little mark there, and then fold, 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 and all you do is you get it to its its smallest number. <laughs> And then you halve everything. So if you oh. need to do a twenty, if you need to do a twenty-eight division grid, basically what I'll do is get a ruler, mm -hmm. measure out to a seventh, mm -hmm. and mark it seventh, and then it's seven, fourteen, twenty-eight. Okay. Yeah, because oh, that's good. Yeah. So the idea for me is I want to waste as little paper as possible. So for mm -hmm. a seven, you could fold it to eight and then cut off one division. Oh. Okay. And then you've got seven, but then you've lost. A chunk of paper, and for something like harmony paper, you can not, the, you can not no, because it's in the center, the center, so yeah. you you don't want to waste it. So you could fold it to eight, fold it to sixteen, and then cut um a strip off each side, and then you'll have fourteen. And you can do that, but it, yeah, my whole idea is if I can get it, so I'm not wasting any paper, exactly. and then get it as accurate as possible. Yeah, yeah. excellent, excellent. Okay, Mister Riyad, you ready? 
I am indeed. One, um, one moment. I am going to turn off the comments right now. So, yep. No yep. worries. I so will we are just... yours, Mr. E. So everybody get ready with the paper. Miren lo que dijo Mr. E. Él dijo que ustedes pueden utilizar una regla. Por ejemplo, para hacer la división de este de 20, eh, el papel de 15 por 15 es perfecto. Lo mismo que el de 7.5 por 7.5. Así que utilicen reglas, no tengan miedo de utilizar una regla para hacer pequeñas marquitas. Así que todos listos con el papel. Ok. All right. There we go. All right. So, there's your grid. And very important to Consíganse un palillo si pueden. I'll just grab my piece. So here we go. Okay. Beautiful design. Okay, so this is what we're folding today. I've just called it a, a hydrangea wreath because mm -hmm. it reminds me of like a Christmas wreath. Um, now, the only reason I discovered this was because, I, as I said before, I was doing that one where you've got a big, mm -hmm. a big square next to four little squares. Mm -hmm. Well, on the back of that, um, if you flatten them all around in a circle, you get this pattern. So yeah. I've chosen yes. a nice um, a Corona um, patterned piece of harmony because mm -hmm. then you get the wreath in the center in a different. Oh. All right. So hopefully the lighting is good for everyone. Yeah. Um, if not, you can't do much. Okay. <laughs> um, so what it's we'll do, okay. What we'll do, we will, you're starting on the diagonal. And we want to make a we want to make a four division pleat in the middle. Mm -hmm. So and one in. So like that. Oh yeah. And see if I'm using a, a seven point five centimeter square for this, it's a lot easier to handle in your hands. I imagine, yeah. But it's it's not as good for tutorials because exactly. um, people can't see what you're doing that much. Yeah. All right. So we do that um, in both directions. Mm -hmm. And this just kind of sets it up for the collapse. You do it so naturally now? Yeah, I can fold these. I can fold the hydrangea in the dark. <laughs> <coughs> Because, yeah, I've folded thousands of yeah. them. Yeah. All right. Wow. So, this is where practice makes a huge difference of where the, um, where the collapses go. Mm -hmm. You just kind of, it just kind of starts to make sense. Let's pop that in like that. Can you lift it a little bit, please? Because it's yep. there. There, there we there. go. Yep. All right. So what we what we're doing is we're just going around and setting up using the creases you've already got, just setting up the um the collapse. Es como que estuviera plegando una hydrangea. Miren la misma, lo, lo que es el mismo la misma base está está plegando en este momento, Mr. E. And so one thing I've had people message me um, uh, after my YouTube tutorials saying that my paper always just seems to pop um, out well. And that really comes down to good grid folding mm -hmm. and your fingers underneath the paper. So mm -hmm. I'm pushing on this side, but I'm using my fingers underneath to just kind of gently manipulate it out. Exactly. So there we go. Yeah. So like that and then we've got that set up like this everyone can see that hopefully and then it just kind of collapses down miren exactamente lo de la, la misma hydrangea él dice que puede fregar la hydrangea hasta con sin luz porque ya lo ha hecho miles de veces Justamente en el centro, miren. 
Mm -hmm. Wow. And you know, you are using my favorite sheet from the pack. I love the, that one. It's this one and the um, one with the yellow in the center. And I never have many left because I yeah. use them a lot. Exactly. All right. So that's the that's the first. Now, if you do hydrangeas a lot, then you'll notice that that is just a um, it's just a hydrangea collapse. It's just that you've got a four division pleat, um, and it just gives you like that at the back. All right. Now. Algo que Mr. Lee dijo es que esto no es para principiantes, es para las personas que ya tienen experiencia en hacer hydrangeas. I was telling everybody that this is not for people who are just beginning folding. No. This is, yeah, this is for a person who has knowledge folding hydrangeas before. Yes, mm -hmm. very much so, because um, I've had people who've followed some of my quite difficult tutorials as their first fold of a hydrangea or a clover. Um, I'm very impressed, but I would strongly recommend getting the um, getting the basics of it first. Mm -hmm. Lovely little tool because you can just pop things in just to get them mm -hmm. right on those intersections. And that's how accuracy. So you see there, you'll get um, this point is popped inwards. So I get underneath and just pop it back out. That's very um, if you're not watching those little pieces, when you push something down to collapse it, you'll be creating new creases and you don't want to do that. Um, there we go. Oh, yeah. I, I recognize that. Even I recognize that step. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so that's where you've got that three point intersection there. And so what we want to do is go around and do it again. Um, mm -hmm. It's this point here that's going to bunch up. But what I do is I ignore it. Mm -hmm. I've got an upset child out there. Uh, don't worry. Miren, right, hasta so... yo reconozco el, lo que es el paso de las hydrangeas. Ese ya lo he plegado yo. Y qué importante es tener un palito. Mr. E, from now on, every time I am folding hydrangeas, I'm going to follow your advice and I'm going to get a toothpick because it's really useful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They really, yeah, they really are. And, and again, it stops things from... Um, from ripping because you can put pressure on a really specific point yeah um to reverse different bits so this part here you'll just see i've just folded the pleat over because i've mm -hmm. just left it at that we'll we'll fix that up in a little bit okay you'll see this if you can that little bit in there's not popped out so i just get underneath and just pop it back out wow there we go and so you'll see that the wreath's starting to form around. Mm -hmm. That's something that, that I like. Your hands are already trained for, uh, you know exactly where to put them, what to push, and you know everything. And sometimes when I am folding, I said, how do I put my fingers? And it's so hard. Yeah. Well, the thing is, because you've got, yeah, you've got your thumbs on the top doing a lot of the pressure. And then all, these fingers, I'll use like all of them underneath. Exactly. Um, I'll, be, I'll be holding the paper with some fingers and the other ones are doing, putting pressure underneath. So I do apologize. I know that some of my tutorials, I, I go a bit fast. Um, and that is, that is because I just forget. I even forget to keep the paper under the camera because I'm just I'm just having yeah. fun and I realize yeah, you can, wait you're just playing. I'm I'm showing other people they can't see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dice Mr. E que a veces que él pide disculpas que a veces en sus tutoriales él es muy rápido, pero a él se le olvida que está haciendo un tutorial y lo que él hace es jugar y divertirse con el papel, entonces, porque hay muchas personas que le han hecho ese comentario, pero también es un, un poco difícil ir despacio en este tipo de plegados. Yeah. You, you know, uh, Lei Ji from, Malash, from Malaysia, she understands everything very well from the hydrangeas. She knows everything and she can get the details and she knows what's next. And this, I asked her, how did you do that? And she told me, just practicing, practicing and practicing. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she, we've been, Tan, we've been in, um, in touch now for a couple of years. Um, and so, yeah, she's asked me a thousands of questions and we, we've chatted lots. And now it's over the last, like, or at least over the last year. I mean, she's really good. Yeah. Like, she's yeah. really good. Yeah. Do it quickly. And that is just, yeah, honestly, it's hours and hours and hours of practice. No yeah. one can do this to this smoothly unless they've made, like, a lot. All right. So there we have the kind of base of it. Mm -hmm. Now what we need to do is fix up these intersections because we've kind of just folded them over. All right. So what we do is we just open it up. Like that. All right. Mm -hmm. And so when you fold these over here, oh, that's got to see, look, this is where knowing what you're doing makes a big difference because I know that needs to be pushed in there. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, it'll crunch and then yeah. you'll get a, a, a bad ending. But um, we fold that down and this just gets folded down as a flap like that. Dice Misterica, para hacer este tipo de diseño se necesita tener mucha, mucha experiencia. Que ustedes sepan lo que son los modelos de, de hydrangeas, dónde se meten los pliegues, eh, porque a veces si no se sabe, ustedes se van a perder. Así que ahora es para las personas que realmente tienen conocimiento de lo que es teselados y hydrangeas. Wow. I cannot believe you're using that, that size of paper. <laughs> you know, when I was practicing my first hydrangeas, I was using 27 by 27 centimeter paper. <laughs> 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 oh my God, yeah. When I was making, I think I made five layers and I said, no, I need bigger paper. <laughs> oh, see, if you make, yeah, if you're making lots of layers, um, you have to, you have to use really big paper. I've, I've done one piece that would have been a uh, mm -hmm. square out of like an A3 mm -hmm. piece of paper. Yeah. And I got to nine layered hydrangeas and then it just wouldn't do it. It just wouldn't go any further. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That is the, the complicated part. The rest of it mm -hmm. is just doing, is just normal clovers. Um, well, what I see is normal clovers. But there we go. So we've got that wreath in the middle. Mm -hmm. Now, as you said, this is about knowing where to put things. Um, so what you've got is you can turn this into clovers mm -hmm. at any point by, by popping that in there. Yeah. So I think what I'll do, I think it's the third one. So we just pop that in like that. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Dice Mr. I que ahora van a hacer lo que son los clovers. Entonces, ya lo, ustedes ya saben lo que es un clover, entonces van a hacer clovers. Todo lo van a hacer clovers en este momento de los cuatro lados. Así que es lo que está haciendo él en este momento. There we go, all right? Mm -hmm. So this is just manually setting you up for another collapse. Yeah. Um, like that, all right? Right. And so what I like folding, um, pinching this one like that kind of gives you a bit of something to push it down. Um, but it's really funny to show people because look how I'll do this. I'll use all of, I'm using all of my fingers and yeah. I'll just put pressure on there and collo collapse it down like that. Yeah, you use all the fingers, yeah. Yeah, because it makes, it means you can get it really accurate. But it's like playing the piano. You need to know exactly, exactly. where to put your fingers yeah. to it get it going. It requires practice, yeah. It, um, a lot of practice so there we go we've got that step off there um, and then we pop that out, wow. out there see and that folds down nicely so there we go wow and now we've got a corner finished off and there's tons of ways that you can finish these corners off there's there's honestly tons mm -hmm. so if we we could we could pop this out and go like go like that and then by the time you end you'd end up with a totally different um different pattern as well but what we'll do is we leave it like this um this is the way i do this you just hold your thumb there and just pinch mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. 
and say, look, look at this. Oh, that's yeah. all. That's not nice. Yeah. We can't have that. <laughs> that's not acceptable. So we get our little toothpick and we gently just push it out. Now, I had to tell a lady, she got, she was really upset. She said she spent all this time folding a grid and spent all the time doing this, got a toothpick and then pushed it through and it went ah! through the intersection right in the middle. And I had to tell her, I have done that hundreds of times. And hundreds. It never has, oh, oh my God, it, it has happened to you too? Oh, hundreds. See, this is the thing is you don't get, you don't get to this level of experience yeah. without failing endlessly. And there's nothing wrong with failing endlessly. If you, if you get annoyed and cry about it and give up, it's like, well, what do you want? What do you want? Like, do yeah. you want to get better at doing this? If you do, it's a piece of paper. I can screw this up in a ball and set fire to it. Like what? It, it's not, it's not worth anything. It's just, you can pick up another piece of paper and oh. try again. Yeah. And again, making the, the green, oh, <laughs> but it's cool. That's the way we learn. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing is, is that I've, a lot of people do comment on a lot of stuff that they, um, they love folding the tessellations. Yeah. They don't like creasing grids. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, yeah, but you've got to do one to do the other. So you may as well find some enjoyment out of doing the grid. And I sit there, I'll, I can watch, watch um, a movie. Um, I'll be in meetings. I'll be on conference calls and I'm just slowly folding a grid. I'm not in any rush to finish exactly. it. Yeah. Um, but you can't, you can't fold a tessellation without a good grid and you can't mm -hmm. rush a good grid. Yeah. It just takes time. Yeah. A lot of time. Yeah. Wow. Miren lo que estaba diciendo Mr. E ahorita, que en estos momentos, por ejemplo, había un pedacito que no estaba bien y él metió lo que es el palillo. Entonces dice que una persona, una señora le dijo que cuando ella metió el palillo, rompió el papel, abrió un hoyo. Entonces dice él que eso a él le ha pasado un montón de veces. Eso es algo normal. Pero lo que él hace es botarlo y volver a plegar otra trama. Y que él está viendo una película o está haciendo algo y está plegando está haciendo tramas, porque esa es la forma en la que se aprende. No hay que ponerse a, a decir, ay, se me rompió, ya no lo voy a hacer. No, hay que plegarla nuevamente y de esa forma se aprende. Wow. Yeah, that has happened to me. I remember I used one uh, toothpick when I was making the layers in the hydrangea and it went yeah. through the paper. And I, 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 I said, I'm going to hide it. And it was hidden. Yeah. Yeah, perfectly, exactly. <laughs> but it feels it feels very bad for me. It's like so painful when that when that happens. Oh my god! Yeah. But so yeah. See, I am. Um, I'm. I'm lucky. Okay. My biggest enjoyment out of doing this is not is not the end result. It's yes. it's not the end result. I find this process endlessly satisfying and relaxing so mm -hmm. if i if i stuff this up and i ruin the grid oh well i just grab another piece and just start folding a grid again yep. and i'm in the exact same position i was before i'm just casually relaxingly fold. it's like meditation yeah i have no end result i just it's you know yeah and the only reason you know what's funny is the only reason i have that box of tessellations <laughs> was because of covid that's the only reason I have a box of tessellations is because of COVID. Before COVID, every almost every one of those would have been given away. Oh, that's good. Almost every, yes. every single one of them. Like um, my good friend Origami Traces, um, mm -hmm. she's from Netherlands. She'll go and um, you know leave them around places. Um, Foldy McFoldface from London, he'll just leave them around places, and I've been doing that for my entire life. Like, as I said, I used to fold them on the bus and the train. Mm -hmm then I'd leave them on the bus and the train. I'd never see who found them. Yeah. Um, I'd just leave them there and, you know, and that was it. So it was just the, the folding for me is the best part. And then I get rid of them. But because of COVID, I couldn't. So now I've um, got boxes full. Yeah. And it made wow. me realize how much I actually fold because I've actually kept them. Mm. I don't want them. I don't want to keep them all. I, that just makes me a bit of an origami hoarder. I want to get rid of them. Um, <laughs> Why so did you put them I in don't... a frame? Oh, because if I, if I did, wouldn't my house would be full of frames. <laughs> I, 
I have a um, I have a, like a two piece perspex, you know, with magnets. Yeah. And it's a perspex thing. I have one of those um on my shelf, and I'll put a different one in every now and then, and then I'll take the other one out, and then I'll give it away. See, the beauty is, is that um, my Instagram mm -hmm. is really just a, a um, a documenting all my different, very all the different variations I've come up yeah. with. I use them all the time. Mm. I go on there and have a look at my own photos and my own tutorials mm -hmm. to go, how the hell did I do that again? Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then I, then I go from there. So once I've taken photos of it, yeah. I don't need it. I don't need it at all. So I just give it away to people. Yeah. Ay, what a pity you live so far away from me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. So there, um, and, a real nice one. So uh, this is one thing I love about um, Harmony paper. Yeah. So if you fold something like that out of paper that's patterned like this, mm -hmm. you, you get an entirely different um, yeah. result because exactly. you'll, you'll have a white um, wreath in the middle, but mm -hmm. the, these point bits are all bright yellow and they look like candles. Oh, um, that's beautiful. And, so let's have a look. So you this you can leave it like this if you wanted. Um, you can simply open those up and fold those the edge bit in like that. Mm -hmm. So these bits just open up, and you just fold along, along that um, crease, and then those little tabs fold back up again. Mm -hmm. Wow! And so yes, this is practice. Okay. Mm. And I then you've love got these, practice. Yes, <gasps> you folded got... it so easily. Wow. Yeah, and so then, so then you'll have those as a different, um, different result. Um, and then what you can do um, is, I like to do is fold those in like that. So you're just folding along the crease, mm -hmm. along the crease, and then flattening that bit down. Mm -hmm. And then you get a squared off. Oh, board. that's great. That looks amazing too. Yeah. So that's all just personal preference exactly. um, of, yeah. of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but let's, let's have a look. I'll show you something while we're here. I don't know how long you've got for these things don't or worry. how long people it's are okay. going to watch for. You can continue. But say if we, we fold this out again. Um... Miren, Mr. E, en este momento les están explicando las formas en las que ustedes pueden plegar las esquinas. Entonces él dice que es de acuerdo a, a su gusto, cómo lo quieren pegar, plegar. Pero en este momento les va a enseñar algo que pueden hacer también con lo que es el, el diseño. All right, so say if we've got, got that. So what we did before was pop that in like that. If we just pop that in that way instead. Like that. Mm -hmm. So it's the exact same fold, but just kind of, it's pushing it out the, out the other way. So if you fold it like that, then you collapse it down. Mm -hmm. You'll oh, end up with those, those things on top. And that's how I came up with my, I've got a tutorial for it, but with the um, hydrangea with the octagonal border, mm -hmm. because all you're doing is putting that um, up on top. Mm -hmm. And so it just adds every little thing will add a new, a new different possibility. Yeah, um, you can one, play with many possibilities, yeah. And one last one I'll show you for this uh, possible for ending, not just this design, but for any design as far as a, um, as a technique you can use. So you can pop those, those sides in. This is all in the same point. All right, and then what we can do Wow. So pop that in there, pop that in there. So this will take a lot of practice, but mm -hmm. so what you're doing here is that you're actually transitioning from one size hydrangea petal yeah. um, like these into a larger size. Um, and this is the transition. It kind of doesn't stay as a point. It, kind of folds out like that. So you've got 
see? So it's a different transition from instead of having the little ones, it goes into a bigger one. And then you can get that little point over the top. Wow. And so that's... It looks very pretty, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, it, depending on the that's paint you're using, mm -hmm. it, it adds a whole different layer of how you want to finish something off. And then from there, you could finish that bit off exactly the same as we did on the other corners. Um, and this is how I've gotten so many variations is because you just go, I wonder what that would look like. Uh -huh. and, and then you go do that. Yeah. And then what I'll do. Oh, yes. And you get so many variations. Wow. And then, think... then what I'll do is I'll, um, after I've done something like this, I will unfold this entire tessellation and reuse the grid mm -hmm. to try another variation until it turns into absolute tatters. Mm -hmm. And then I will um, probably throw it out. Oh. Uh, once it's filled with holes. Mm hmm Wow. That's how you play. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's because I can't, if I do a big grid, like I've got one at the moment, and I love posting photos of a, a grid being reused over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, yeah, otherwise you're going to spend all your time folding grids. Really what I'm wanting to do is figure out techniques. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't want the end result. I want the, um, well, the difference. So look, and then we've got, Got oh, yes. And little one of them has a snaggle tooth. Oh, that's very cute. I love it. Yeah. Wow. Miren, dice Mister que él al plegar lo que son las eh, las tramas, a él le gusta mucho jugar. Por eso que es que él crea tantos tantos patrones, porque para él eso es lo divertido. Si él ha plegado, ha tomado tanto tiempo ple plegando una trama, entonces se juega con la trama, e intenta. Y y así descubren nuevos diseños. Entonces, eso es lo que les está invitando a ustedes. En este momento, pueden terminarlo de la forma que ustedes deseen. Jueguen con el papel eh, para encontrar lo que son diseños nuevos. Wow. I love it. And I love how you play so naturally and your fingers know the paper and the paper loves you and it doesn't get real. <laughs> It's, there is a good relation between you and the paper. Wow. We've been together for years. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Wow. So that's all the same. That's beautiful. And so... Beautiful. So once you've learned, so if, if people want to go and experiment endlessly, once you've learned something like that, mm -hmm. then what what does what does Mr. E do? I go on variations. Where can I place I know. that wreath? That one, yeah. Yeah. So it just, just and and then it's once I've learned how can I place it differently. The question is how small can I get? So there we go. Yes, miren es lo que él hace, cuando él ha terminado un diseño así, se pone a plegar variaciones, entonces así es como descubre los diseños. And those designs are so unique, oh my God, they are beautiful. And they are totally yeah, I've never, different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I've never, I've never seen it before, so I, um, I've put, I, again, I, I work full time and I have a family, so I don't, I don't have endless time to make tutorials. Um, but I put on a, a simple tutorial of just the wreath mm -hmm. on my Instagram highlights. Mm -hmm. And because people are absolutely amazing folders on around the world, they've got just that little, um, just, the, just the tutorial for that tiny little yeah. wreath in the, just in the center. And people have done other things with it. So, it's, yeah, it's really good. Yes. Yeah, it's a big guide. You're guiding a lot of people. So that's what I like about you. You're stimulating the creativity to people and you are motivating people to create. And that's good. And that's all I want to do because I get so much of enjoyment out of all of this. Um, I may as well share it with everyone else. And it's a lot more fun to do stuff than it is to watch someone do stuff. Yes. I am going to turn on the comments. So if you have questions for Mr. E, you can ask right now. Wow, Mr. E. Believe me, I am speechless with your ability, with your creativity, with your dance, with the paper and the fingers. Oh my God, that's amazing. I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so you imagine how hard it is for me to make, um, make tutorials. I, I have to re-record bits all the time because I realized when I'm, I'm like, 
I, I didn't have the paper even, even near the camera um, because I was just enjoying photo. I'm like, oh, that's not going to help anyone. And then I realized you did that way too fast. No one would know what you just did um, unless they already know what they're doing. So I'd have to slow back and then re-record sections. So a lot of practice. But you know, there's something good about YouTube because in YouTube you can uh, uh, play it slowly. So there's no yeah. problem. <laughs> and there's uh, my and friend from Argentina. She's Alquimia Japonesa and she's a big fan of you and, and she's very a uh, genius with paper. So she says right now she is traveling and she's very sad because she couldn't be here folding. But she says that she's traveling and she's trying to watch the live also. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's uh, koi, f uh, koi fish says that yep. you are the hey, Simon. Look, <laughs> oh my god! Um, we've got one little pixel. Um, understandable, you give up. One thing I, I really do recommend is start at my. I think it's my second ever YouTube video. I've got a series. Um, I really recommend watching it because it gives a breakdown all the different pieces, and then it's just. It is, it is pure, purely. Oh, someone said that they make um, stuff out of sugar packets and leave them at cafes. You're a champion. That's exactly what I do. Leave it yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Mira, and alguien it, ya terminó. Oh my God. I am, I usually ask them if somebody finishes, finished and they want to show it, but I know that many people are not going to show it right now. So after they will publish the pictures because it takes time, but it was yeah, amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. Wow. Um, miren, Mr. E, eh, algo que les quiero decir antes que, eh, que sigamos, es que Mr. E tiene una caja llena de teselados, de, de, pero ¿saben por qué? Por el COVID. Él dice que si no hubiera COVID, no tuviera ninguno porque él los regala. Y si no los regala, él los deja en los trenes, en los medios de transporte, los dejen en todos lados para ver quién se los encuentra. Imagínense. Wow. Mr. E, thank you so much. Please, people, join, uh, follow Mr. E, not only in Instagram, but YouTube. That's very important. Mr. E, please, more, more, more tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> I have, as I said, I've got a very long list, mm -hmm. um, but I will because I, it was, Hey, to everyone, thank you so much for all your interest because um, when Mariana put out the question to see, I couldn't believe there's a lot of a lot of people answering and I put it out on mine and I had a bunch of people. So it's really cool that everyone's interested. I will do a tutorial for this one. Um, I've been meaning to do it um, for like a year. So I've got a list. I've got a list. <laughs> it's really long. It's a very long list. <laughs> Para las personas que querían ese, el número dos, él va a hacer un tutorial y va a seguir haciendo tutoriales. Sigan a Mr. E en YouTube. Los videos de él son muy buenos y así ustedes van avanzando también. Porque este tutorial, este el vivo, no era para cualquier persona, sino se necesitaba mucha, mucha experiencia. Mr. E, what can I tell you? I love your work. You are a genius. Your no. genius. Yeah. And, oh my God. Yeah, I have to go to, to New Zealand to get one of your little ones because they are so cool. They are so beautiful. <laughs> well, I might, I might mail you something over to Canada. Please, please, because you know what I will do? I will frame them. I put everything <laughs> in my face. And look at this. I was very proud because of my hydrangeas. Look. Look, look at that. <laughs> Those are the ones that I told you. Oh, my paper has to be bigger because, oh my God. And when I see your paper so small, I said, oh my God, shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mr. Marie. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure to talk Sandra, to you. Sorry about the fast tutorials. I'm working on it, okay? I'm working on it. I am. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Your tutorials are great. They are great. But sometimes, yeah. What I do is I stop. I stop it and I yeah. do it. I, I look like a turtle, but yeah, it's possible to, to follow you. Because There's you no explain, rush. You explain so well and so clearly. Mr. E, thank you so much for your time, for thank your you. wisdom. I would like to put my, my hands in the phone and get your box and have it here. <laughs> 
yes. That's, that was beautiful. And, y miren, él no se detiene, siempre está plegando. You are always folding. Always, always folding. That's something that I like. And you gave some good tips. You have to be patient, you have to be constant, and if you fail, don't be afraid of doing it again. That's something very Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. E, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful day because it's, it's uh, now 20 to 9 in the morning and the day's ready to begin in New Zealand. <laughs> have a, grand, a wonderful day for us. It's almost a night or it's really late but we really had a wonderful time and thank you thank you so much thank you see everyone bye bye gracias a todos tengan paciencia y a seguir plegando bye bye adios mister bye bye